Hi, I'm Sasha Herman and welcome to another episode of Homes and Housing, the property show where we help you whether you are a landlord, an investor, a tenant or even a developer. Now, Britain's long-standing affordable housing crisis has seen many councils over the years looking for ways to work with the private sector to provide much-needed social housing. Guaranteed rent is one such way used to entice property investors to part with their portfolio. Today, I'm going to be talking to Director Romesh Mathaya of Barnet's award-winning residential letting and management agency, Central Housing Group. He's going to be talking to us about this guaranteed rent scheme and what it means to private landlords. Quite simply put, he says it's the most reliable way to let your property. So let's find out more. Hi Ramesh, it's great to have you with us today. Thank you for joining us. Now, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions about your company and what sort of service you provide. So firstly, what service can landlords expect when working with Central Housing Group? Yes, uh, landlords working with us can expect a fully let and managed service. Um, so we offer a, a guaranteed rent scheme and that would mean that you would get your property let and managed and you wouldn't have to be involved uh, in your property if you didn't want to be. It's entirely up to landlords um, what they wish to do and whether, how much they want to involve us or, and how much they want to do themselves. Okay, fantastic. So you talk about a guaranteed rent scheme. Now on the surface, that seems self-explanatory, but what does that really mean for landlords in terms of security and protection when they're letting their property to you? So guaranteed rent, um, there are sort of a number of key benefits of our scheme that we offer landlords. One, the rent's guaranteed. So exactly as it says, um, you will receive the rent throughout the term of the agreement, whether there's a tenant there or not. So. In, in addition to this, void periods, you would not, as a landlord, suffer any void periods. So if the property fell empty, you would still receive your rent. Another key benefit is that you have no chance of having any issues with rent arrears that you would normally have when you rent a property privately. So there's no risk of receiving, of having any rent arrears. Um, in addition, um, if there's damage done to the property by the tenants, then we would put that right at our company expense. So occasionally tenants will cause damage and that's something that we would cover and take care of for landlords. That's fantastic. So that's a real plus then for landlords to know that they've got guaranteed rent and absolutely no voids. So what type of properties do you look for when working with landlords and the local authorities? So typically the type of properties that we would require are usually sort of studios up to four bedroom property size. Uh, that would be purpose built properties, uh, flats and houses or converted properties. Um, Generally, the main level of demand, however, is two to three bedroom sized properties. But depending on uh, demand from local authorities, they also require those other sizes, but not as many properties usually. Brilliant. So it seems there's quite a broad spectrum of properties that you do take on. And what sort of standard does a property need to adhere to um, in order for you to take it on from the landlord? So properties need to be of a good standard of repair and decoration, so well decorated and floor coverings in good order, as well as the general repair and condition to be in a good standard that's lettable. In addition, there's a number of key health and safety compliances that one has to legally uh, arrange anyway, uh, which we would require as well. Perfect. And I believe you're actually working on some properties at the moment. So is it OK if we go and take a look and see what you're doing? Yes, absolutely. And um, we've got a property which we're working on, which is a two bedroom ground floor flat in North London. So, um, yes, let's go and have a look at that because that would be ideal to sort of give you an example of the kind of work we're doing and um, bringing a property up to the right standard. Okay, so we're in your two bed flat, which is clear is being refurbed. Um, normally I'd know what room I'm in, but this has kind of thrown me a little bit. Is this a new feature that we're having in the room? Tell me, tell me what we're doing in this room. Yeah, no, Sasha, it's not a new feature. <laughs> um, as you can see, there's lots of work being done here. Yeah. So this flat's being refurbished and one of the things is the bathroom. So okay. the bath has been moved out here, the old bath, and we'll be putting a new bathroom here. And we were talking about the standards, so obviously there's quite a lot of work going on. So talk to me a little bit more about what you need to do to get it up to scratch. Sure. Well, with this particular property, we've had to renew the flooring. So it had a laminate flooring, which okay. was in quite poor condition. So we we're replacing the laminate, redecorating. The bathroom is quite old. It's the original bathroom when these flats were built. So that's being replaced as well. 
In addition, we need to do electrical upgrading to make sure it's of the current 18th edition electrical standard right. uh, and a gas safety report, uh, EPC, so the okay. usual compliance stuff. So, a fair few things need to be done. And you mentioned flooring. Um, is there like a preference that you would have laminate over carpet or does it not really matter? Um, to be honest, it doesn't matter. It's up to uh, a landlord and how a property comes. So we're quite happy to take a property on with carpet or with laminate flooring. Um, so it either is good as long as the condition of it is in a good acceptable condition for letting. Okay. And what's this room going to be? So this is the main bedroom. Okay. Uh, oh, right, it's just okay. been redecorated and obviously we'll clear out all the, the junk okay. and rubbish but once it, the property is finished. Okay, brilliant. So do you want to show me around the rest of the flat? Yeah, absolutely. Let's go. Okay, so we have the bathroom here. Now this it looks like it's quite a lot of work that's going on in here. Does, is this normal for a property that you take on? Talk about what's happening um, here for me. Not normal. Not every property requires a bathroom replacement, but this particular uh, property did. We did have an issue with bath taps, so the bath uh, taps were at this end. Ah. And as you can see with the bath head, it's very awkward to access the taps and change those. So right. the bathroom suite was very old and it's th about 30 years old. So we took a decision with the landlord to replace the bathroom. And also, when we put a new bath in, we'll be spinning the bath round, so the bath taps will be at this end, where the shower was installed at some point in the past. So it would then make it much more user-friendly and uh, maintenance-friendly. So you're changing friendly. it around then? Okay. Yeah, so it will change position, it means that you can access and maintain this bath and the taps, etc. in the future. Because that's quite unusual, isn't it, to have the taps this end, but then you've got this entire pillar, so you can't... Yeah, I mean, th these properties were built like this in the, in the 80s, where they created this little boxing area, and that makes it much more awkward to access that end of the bath and the bath taps. So okay. um, I guess when you build the property, it's different because you don't have that um, idea of how would you deal with maintenance issues yeah. in the future. Okay, so Ramesh, do you normally take the properties on furnished or unfurnished? and what would a landlord need to leave in the property as a requirement? Sure, um, good question. Largely unfurnished, I would say. Um, the key things that we must have, floor covering, so carpets or laminate, nets, heavy curtains or blinds as appropriate for the windows. Okay. Um, and in the kitchen, we must have a cooker and a fridge freezer. Only other thing we may require, depending on which local authority, we may require new beds to be supplied. Right. And it really does vary, but uh, that's a possible. And how long do you take on a property for and what are the benefits to the landlord for that? Um, typically we take on a minimum term really is two years. Um, okay. The reason for that is that it's not worth doing this scheme and, and getting the property ready to the correct standard for the local authorities for, for a period shorter than that. So two years up to five years. We've got many landlords who've been on our scheme for up to nearly 20 years now. Yeah. So they've continuously had the same property with us and renewed agreements and continued letting um, to different tenants over that time, of course. I can see why, because obviously it's peace of mind for the landlord. The longer you've got their property, then the more peace of mind they've got, they haven't got to worry about finding other tenants for it. So I can understand that. Absolutely. So they've not had, in some cases, they've not had a single void period in that whole 10, 5, 10, 15, 20 yeah. years. And their rent's been guaranteed. So it's worth taking a lower rent in that situation because you don't have those other risks of void periods and, and possible loss of rent. Yeah, that's a huge plus long term, long term taking it on. Brilliant. Um, okay, shall we head into the living room? Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so I take it this is the living room. Um, lots going on in here. What what are we doing in the living room to get this ready? So in here, essentially redecoration of there was new laminate flooring, which is okay. underneath all the tools and the uh, covering, as you can see. Okay, and it's got nice big windows as well. It's a nice bright space. Absolutely, it's got like a nice that. big bay window. It's also got an inner secondary inner glazing, uh, okay. unit, which is a little bit unusual, but uh, I think when these were built, because it's close to the north circular. Yeah, um, no, it's a nice space in here. So obviously, the houses go to local authorities. So what sort of rates do you offer landlords that are looking to work with you? Okay, so the rents and the rates that we're able to pay are based on the postcode of the property and also the number of bedrooms. Right. Typically, uh, the rents tend to be about 85 to 90 percent of what the open market value is. However, that can vary according to the local market conditions in, in each area. So that's actually lower than local market rates, in effect. Um, is that is that quite usual? What's the reason for that? It is usual. Um, it's typical because in this situation, what you've got to remember is that 
it's a property that's going to be let on a guaranteed rent. So the risk of not receiving rent isn't there and there's no risk of having void periods. So if you let a property privately and you get a higher rent and then you enc encounter a void period of one week, two weeks, three weeks, then you'd effectively be reducing the amount of rent that you actually receive right. over the course of that year. Okay. So it so, sort of takes it that into account. Okay, so if you're letting, if you're renting at a lower rate to the landlord, then how do you as a company make money? Okay, so good question. So we charge our landlords a management fee, right. uh, a competitive management fee. In addition, the local authorities we work with, they basically pay us a management fee as well to provide this service because we need to provide the service to a certain standard and to manage the property in a certain way for the local authorities. <laughs> I'm really liking the uh, two-tone blue in the kitchen. Is this a new design that people are wanting now? <laughs> no, not really, but I mean, this is the original kitchen that was here when we yeah. took the, the property on and, and refurbishing it. So we are doing some work to partially upgrade the kitchen. So worktops being replaced, sinks being replaced, the oven hob extractor. Um, we put a, a, a heat detector and a carbon monoxide alarm in. So. Okay. Um, obviously, their landlords have to work within budgets and they unfortunately can't always change everything. So we've done a sort of a partial upgrade to bring it up to a nice sort of fresher standard, but again, lettable. Yeah, like I said, as long as it's habitable and, and you know, people can live in it. And what about doors? Does anything need to be done? So on this particular property, property, yeah, on all properties we take on, you must put a fire door in. So you can see they've started, the, uh, our builders have started fitting the fire door, which is in place. And, needs to be finished with an overhead So that's closure. a requirement, is it, to have a fire door? Absolutely, it's an essential okay. requirement when we let to the local authorities to have a fire door, mains powered smoke alarms, mains powered heat detectors, carbon monoxide alarms, so they're key health and safety features that we must have. Okay, and are there any type of properties that you would not consider? Is there anything that's not suitable for you as a company? Um, we don't tend to take on HMOs, so there's very, very large uh, properties with lots of studio flats in, so HMOs are, are a typical property we don't take on. And just explain, just to people that don't know, what, what is a HMO? A HMO is generally a large building, large property that's been um, subdivided into a number of flats, and it's described as a house in multiple occupation, so right. a series of studio flats in one building, basically. We okay. tend to not have much demand from the local authorities for that type of uh, accommodation. Because you said generally it's from studio to four bedroom houses, so you kind of stop at four beds. That's that's kind of what the authorities are looking for, up to around four beds. Yes, I mean okay. occasionally they, they need larger properties, but it's on a very, very small uh, scale basis. Okay. Well, I don't know about you, but I definitely learned a lot today. Thank you so much for joining us for today's episode of Homes and Housing. To find out more on this episode and others, please do make sure you follow our social media channels and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'll see you next time.